Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Well, first of all, Jacob the Railer, I can give you the background of that silly thing I saw some time ago. We haven't really had many people contacting us about it over the years, and it's something I've largely forgotten about and ignored, but since you bring it up, I will address it. I don't generally like to talk about personal issues on these broadcasts, but I will do it this time, make an exception. Uh, Jacob Derailer. Well, as you say, when people spoke out for truth in the past, they were called, you troubler of Israel, they said to Elijah. Not that I'm comparing myself to Elijah. Or what they said to Amos, you know, go back to Judah and prophesy. Don't come up here and do this. These kinds of things. That, or these are the men who've upset the world and so forth in the book of Acts. Religious hypocrites have always said things like that about people who told the truth. Now, by the grace of God, I've attempted to tell the truth. If somebody can fault me doctrinally or factually for something I've taught doctrinally or something that I've said factually, Fair enough, that's fair game. But when people can't fault you for what you say, or they can't fault your doctrine, they attack you personally and say, you're a railer, or you're a this, you're a that. That is the absolute, unmistakable identification of a religious hypocrite. That's what the Sanhedrin did to Jesus. They couldn't fault what he said, so they attacked him for saying it. That is what the court did to um, Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 36 and 37. The court of Zedekiah couldn't fault him for what he was saying, so they attacked him for saying it. Martin Luther may have ended badly, but he began right. And when he issued his 95 Thesis, challenging the sale of, uh, of indulgences, nailing them to the door of the Wittenberg Cathedral, the response of the Roman papacy was not a disputation, point by point, refuting what he was saying are arguing theologically. They simply issued a papal bull, quote unquote, a papal bull attacking him for saying it. Whenever somebody can't respond to what you're saying, they can't fault you doctrinally or dispute the truth of what it is you're maintaining. They go after you personally. They take the ad hominem approach. This is the hallmark of a religious hypocrite. When people will do this and they won't identify themselves, as the vindictive railer people did, then they're not only a hypocrite, they're a coward. They won't even say who they are. But we have uncovered some of them. This is the background to the situation. There is a woman who's known to people who know us, and everyone we know who knows her tell us she's mentally unstable. I just know that people who know her in South Africa and elsewhere tell us She's mentally unstable. Her name is Deborah Durand. Deborah Durand. And she seems to turn against everyone, even her own followers. She eventually falls out with them and turns against them in a serial pattern. People who used to work with her told us what she was like, so we just ignored her. But what, what she actually did was, she herself was, was calling people things like... She was insulting them and using abusive, vitriolic language, attacking people who disagree with her. But then she ascribed what she herself was doing to me. And what she did was she took something that I had said and prefaced it with, with, with the preface, if you don't agree with me, you are a this, that. And she puts it in quotes as if I said it. She openly lied. She quoted me for something I never said and took something I did say out of context. Then some other chap named John Chinkford or something who uses an avatar, I won't identify himself, propagates it. This is absurd. I never said those things. Now, she talks like that. Uh, 
but she's going after me for something that I never even said, but she herself has said. This is a crazy woman. She was documented lying. In the book, uh, Shadows of the Beast, we have a section called The Great Myth, where we talk about why I don't believe in the pre-trib rapture. But I pay tribute to many figures who do. I endorse their ministry. As I say, there are otherwise people who aren't very much on the same page with. I thank the Lord for their faithfulness and so forth and so forth. She obviously never read the book, or if she did, she's more doubly lying, saying that I've attacked these people and said this and that, and I've attacked them by all these names. She openly lied. Anybody can obtain a copy of the book. Shadows of the Beast, and read the great myth. Get it on Kindle, get it in print, and see, I never said what she said. The woman is an out-and-out -out liar. Give account for what other people put on their websites. I can only be responsible for our own material. This is not the first time, or the, I'm sorry, the only time it's happened. I took extreme issue with the false teaching of John MacArthur, supported by Jimmy DeYoung, supported by Phil Johnson, and others that it will be possible to take the mark of the beast, worship the Antichrist, that is worship Satan incarnate in de facto terms, and still be saved, be born again, and go to heaven. That's what MacArthur teaches. Now, I took extreme issue with this error. He's going around raging against people who are not cessationists, raging against people who do not believe the gifts of the Spirit enter with the apostles. Yet he himself ignores the following. In fact, he rejects it. In effect, we're told this. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. And yow tau and yow nays. They've no rest, day and night. Those who worship the beast in his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. They have no rest, day and night. Whoever takes the mark of the beast worships the beast in his image and receives the mark, the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. No, that's wrong, says John MacArthur. Don't believe that. They can still be saved and go to heaven. He's basing a presupposition on a presupposition till he gets so far away from the word of God. It's like what Isaiah said, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. What an outrageous, dangerous, false thing to say. Dr. Phil Johnson takes a clip of me, an edited clip of me, and does not say what I'm speaking about. He does not even address what I'm reacting to. He does not even mention the fact that I'm challenging John MacArthur's false and dangerous and demonic teaching, that it will be possible to worship the Antichrist, take the mark of the beast, and still be saved. He doesn't even mention it. He just shows me being angry in my reaction to John MacArthur. These people are low. They have no scruples. But you can't control them in the age of the Internet. It even gets more crazy. You have conspiracy theorists, people who are simply conspiracy theorists, who confuse conspiracy theory with discernment and end-time prophecy. They're always up about the Illuminati, and, the, and many of them are King James-only proponents, people like this. And the things they come up with are unbelievable. Because somebody links to the Moriel website, I don't have to link to them because they link to me or link to Moriel. And they're also linked to somebody else that's heretical. Therefore, I become guilty <laughs> because they've linked to me and they're also linked to somebody who's heretical, allegedly. Therefore, I must be in league with the one who's heretical. It's absurd. It's not even guilt by association. There is no association. It's absurd. But these people have nothing better to do when they imagine themselves being on about discernment. There is a holy anger in Scripture, demonstrated by Moses, demonstrated by Jesus when he drove the money changers out of the temple. There is a holy anger. But there is a propensity in all of us to some degree, and in many of us certainly to a more acute degree, to confuse a holy anger with our own indignation, even at something that's legitimately wrong. 
the anger of man will never achieve the righteousness of God. But wait a minute. When Moses destroyed the golden calf and smashed the Decalogue, or when Jesus not once but twice drove the tele-evangelists out of the temple, uh, the money preachers, uh, was that holy anger? Or was it just the anger of man? Judge scripturally. Judge carefully. Now, look, I'm not perfect. None of us are. I've made mistakes. I have phrased things in ways in retrospect I wish I had not. That is true. In the heat of battle, it's easy to make some errors in judgment. During the Toronto Pensacola counterfeit revival scandal, a lot of hand grenades were thrown in all directions by all kinds of people. And things were said and done with good intention that would have been more effective had they not been done in haste, in the haste of battle. But we're in the middle of a battle. I'm not justifying any errors that others or myself may have and did make at that time. But look what we were up against. Look at the circumstances. That doesn't justify it, but it certainly explains it. The Railer. Jacob the Railer. I once actually worked for a railroad, so you can call me Jacob the Railer. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.